A down here and D up here, and you make the B and C terms negative. Okay, um, so to find the inverse Jacob Jacobian of this thing, it would actually be quite annoying to do A times D and B times C. Some when you generally when you do a revolute prismatic, you actually find that you can use some trig identities and it cancels down and becomes really nice and easy. You can use the whole um, cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one. Um, but in this case, we don't actually get that too much. Um, and it can just be annoying and, has and painstaking. So what you can do, you can always, if you only need to use the Jacobian for this current configuration, if that's what the question is or that's what you need, you can simply make it easy on yourself. Rather than finding the general uh, Jacobian inverse, just find the inverse for the current configuration. So what I mean by that is it basically, you can only use it for it, the current configuration. So um, for how the robot is currently set up. Wow, that was a big lot of repeating of myself. But moving on. Okay, so the starting configuration is at 300, 200. That's the starting point. And so its starting configuration, um, it, we're told to be, assume this. So theta 1 will be 0 degrees and theta 2 will be 90 degrees. Um, hopefully, if you looked at problem set 2, you understand how theta 1 and theta 2 work. If not, just believe me. Theta 1 is 0 degrees. Theta 2 is set would be 90 degrees there. Okay, and so down here, theta 1 equals 0 degrees. We just plug those values into our Jacobian, and it kind of works out nicely, and that's why I chose these values. You get the Jacobian, not the inverse Jacobian, to be equal to this. We can then find the inverse Jacobian of that pretty simply, because uh, we times this value by this value, which is here, and this value, oop, this value by this value, which gives us this part here, and we put that all one on this. This thing here is known as the determinant of this matrix. Um, if this thing is zero, you'll have a singularity. If the determinant is zero, you have a singularity, meaning there is no inverse or, or something like that. And so it kind of becomes annoying. So basically, we find that. We then swap our terms around, the A and the D term. You notice they're swapped and we make the opposite of B and C, like we take the negative of it. Okay, we then, you can evaluate this front part to get 16.67 in this case, and then multiply that. So when you multiply a matrix by a scalar, you simply multiply every element by the 16.67. And so remember this is just only for the current um, point A configuration, so in that right angle configuration. And so that is our inverse Jacobian, again for the current configuration. So we now can find the joint velocities by using this part here, by using this formula. So we simply plug in this and we plug in our velocities. Remember we were told it was moving in 100 millimeters per second um, in the negative x direction. Uh, so that's negative 0.1 meters in the x direction, meters per second in the x direction, and zero meters per second in the y direction, or in this case, uh, x, y, which we write like that, multiplying the, that out and you get q dot is equal to 0 radians and 0, point, uh, 0 radians per second and 0 0.5 radians per second. The first element cor corresponds to theta 1, the velocity of theta 1, and the second one corresponds to the velocity of theta 2. And so you notice you get this, okay, theta 1 equals 0 radians per second and theta 2 equals 0 0.5 radians per second. Now, this actually kind of makes sense. Um, if we go back to our drawing, so th just remember theta 1, the velocity of theta 1 is 0 meters per second, velocity of theta 2, two is 0 0.5 radians per second. Okay, so if we notice this thing here, now if we rotate theta 1, this thing's going to be moving at this point in time, if, this, if theta 1 was rotating at any value, you're going to have some sort of velocity in the y direction because that would be pushing the tool point up. Um, but if we rotate just theta 2, in this point in time, because it's trying to move this way, if you consider this going through an arc, it's moving this way, it's moving this way. When, it, when it's at this point, its linear velocity is going to be in this direction only. And so it kind of makes sense that on, we only have theta Q, Q1's not moving, and just theta 2 um, is, is rotating. Okay? 
So you, again, you can kind of, like I did in problem set one, you can kind of, as well as problem set two, you can kind of intuitively reason to see if, you can use some reasoning to see if your answer makes sense. And so this answer makes sense to me. Um, if not, trust in the maths, I guess. Uh, and hopefully you didn't make a mistake. Okay, for question two. So question two, let me just go read it again. So question one was finding, okay, what joint velocities do we need to move this thing um, in 100 millimeters per second in that direction? Question two is assuming that the robot arm has successfully drawn the arc, wants to set rest at point B. So it's resting here, it's not moving. If someone pushes in the negative x direction, that's a lie, remember, pushing in the positive x direction against the pen, exerting a 0 0.1 Newton force, how much force slash torque will be seen in each joint as a result of this friction? Uh, not of this friction, of this push. Um, I forgot to change that there from friction, from pushing, from friction to pushing. Uh, result of this force. Okay. I don't know why friction is there. Sorry, guys. Two mistakes there. Positive and force. So how much force torque will be seen in each joint as a result of this uh, applied force? Okay. So again, if we kind of think about it to start off with, if these are both revolute joints, okay, if we're pushing this way, so this link here is absolutely rigid. So theta 2 or joint 2 isn't really going to be reacting to that force pushing that way. So this whole thing is wanting, wanting to rotate kind of in that direction because really this thing here can't rotate. It can be compressed and maybe put some force on this joint. But this joint here isn't going to have a torque due to this force because one it's in line it's in line with that it's in line so if you uh know about statics or anything or even dynamics um a moment about this point would actually be zero because you'll have this force times and there's no perpendicular distance so you're going to have no torque here um again intuitively you're going to have some torque applied down here and it's going to be some form of three uh point three times this so maybe so you're probably going to have uh a force of 0 0.3 times 0 0.1, so 0 0.03 newton meters applied to joint one. Okay, and that makes sense because this thing's trying to push this way, so this thing, this link here, can't be really compressed, and this, so this joint can't feel anything because it actually try, passes through that one. But this one, you actually get a moment created about this joint due to this force, and so you should see some torque being generated or exerted onto this. Um, not generated, yeah, exerted onto this um, onto this joint here. So we should see about 0 0.03 newton meters um, exerted on this one due to this force. So that's the intuition, or that's what you should expect. And so going down. Okay, so now you, you again you're using the Jacobian, and basically what we're using Jacobian. Uh, but in this case, we're using the Jacobian transfer, uh, transpose, okay? And so torque is equal to the Jacobian transpose times by the force uh, exerted on your tool tip, okay? And so basically, this was our Jacobian, okay? So the Jacobian transpose. Now, the trans for transposing a matrix, uh, matrix, first row becomes first column, okay? As you can see there, second row becomes second column again as you can see there so that's how you get the transpose um, the force we're told um, well we're told in the negative x direction but again that's the light it's meant to be in the positive x direction if you look at the actual we're told to assume these configurations so 0 0.1 in the x direction 0 in the y direction again these must be in newtons so use the standard units now at point b in the specified configuration Theta 1 and Theta 2 will both equal to 90 degrees. So if we go look at that, um, you'll see why. So in this configuration, Theta 1 has been rotated 90 degrees from X naught, and Theta 2 is rotated uh, 90 degrees from X1. Remember, X1 extends out from link 1. So there's 90 degrees in there. Okay, so both Theta 1 and Theta 2 equal 90 degrees. Okay, so if we plug those into our Jacobian transpose, you get these values here. You also notice that this is basically the same transpose. Um, a similar transpose, or we have similar values to that here, um, but 
remember this is for configuration one, not configuration two. Okay, so we've got these values here for our transpose Jacobian. We times by the force and we get something like this. Okay, so thus this again, this is the force applied on theta one or joint one, and this is the force applied on theta uh, joint two. Now you notice we we intuitively said it would be 0 0.03 uh, newton meters. And so that's exactly what we get. We get negative 0 0.03 Newton meters. Uh, the reason that it's neg negative is basically because it's going opposite um, to the positive direction um, if you use the right hand rule because Z would be pointing out of your page um, in this situation. If you follow the right hand rule, Z would be pointing out of your page. And so ne the clockwise movement, clockwise about this direction, so going from y naught to x, so clockwise would be considered negative um, based on that z will be pointing out of the page. And so we get a negative 0 0.03 newton meters worth of torque generated at on joint one, which is uh, exerted on joint one, sorry, not generated. And that's what we're expecting. So the torque exerted on joint ones and two due to the 0 0.1 newton force are uh, theta one torque equals that and theta two equals that. So if we wanted to withstand these forces, joint one would actually, the motor of joint one would need to supply a 0 0.03 newton meters of torque just to hold its position, okay? And joint two doesn't need to supply anything. Again, remember, because the force is actually traveling through joint two. So if you understand statics, dynamics, you'd understand that. Um, that the moment, there's no perpendicular resistance and so you don't get a moment about joint two. Okay, so that's the end of problem set three. Hopefully you now understand forward kinematics a bit more. So how you can how you can go about working out the X and Y formulas for to write, to describing what the tool tips coordinates are with uh, in respect to the base frame based on uh, the revolute angles, so the joint angles of revolutes and the uh, extension values of prismatic prismatic joints. Hopefully then you also understand that the Jacobian is very useful and that it can be used, um, the inverse Jacobian and the Jacobian can be used for finding either velocities of the actual tooltip or the inverse Jacobian can be used to find, along with, if you know the velocities of the tooltip, the uh, joint, joint velocities required to keep up that, uh, to maintain that velocity or to give that uh, tooltip velocity. You can also use the Jacobian transpose to find the torques, um, the torques exerted uh, on the joints due to an external force. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense, um, and good luck with it.